Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Where's the piss bottle? It's over there. All right, people. In the wake of Conor Ben versus Chris Eubank Jr. being postponed, slash cancelled, really, in the wake of Conor Ben's failed PED test, which apparently took place at the start of September, which is strange that it, like... You know, we'll talk about that more in a sec. But obviously, on YouTube, we all had a bit of a laugh, and on Twitter as well, because we wanted to know what Tony Bellew would say. And I just feel the need to make this video, because he came out and made a statement saying that his stance on drug cheats is the same as it always is. Banned them. Didn't mention any names, you know. But he said that's his stance on drug cheats. But also, he defended, imagine this, defended Eddie Hearn. And said that Eddie Hearn pulled the show despite not having to do so. And that that's fact. Now, I'm going to call him out on this. All right? And before anyone says, gee, you do like doing these videos we talk about Tony Bellew. I don't do them too often. And look, Bellew as a fighter, I respect massively. He was a great fighter. He was an overachiever in many ways when you look at his career. Because he never really, he never really struck me as being... You're more than European, kind of knocking on the door at world level. And then when he went to Cruiser, even against Mastanac, I thought it was on the AJ White undercard. He nearly stopped Mastanac in the 12th round, but he struggled a bit in that fight. It was a close fight. And then he just came to life when he beat Makabu. Obviously, the, well, that was kind of, well, so he came to life. That was near the end. But he definitely had a good run of Cruiser weight. There's no doubt about it. I think, though, the cruiserweight division at the time was a lot easier. I mean, Lebedev was the, the main guy. This was just before Usek, Gassiev, Dorty Coast. Briadis was kind of... We were talking about him, but he hadn't really... He hadn't won anything. He was mandatory for Bellew. But Bellew was going to fight David Hay. And in hindsight, Bellew versus Briadis, that could have been a really good scrap. I might have even... Oh, I might have even picked Bellew if it had been in the UK. If it had been in the UK, I might have even picked Bellew to beat Myers Breedis. Do you know that? I really do. And if you hear the tractor going up the road, sorry about that if I picked up on that. But he's, as a person, I don't like Bellew. As a person. Now, Bellew has basically said that Eddie Hearn pulled the show despite, despite still being able to do it, put it on, and that's fact. Basically, in a roundabout way, he's defending Eddie Hearn. Defending Eddie Hearn's decision because he's saying that Eddie Hearn took the moral high ground and pulled this show, despite the fact that this test was made aware to both parties back in September. It does kind of make you understand more why Eubank Sr. was so against this fight and wanting this fight postponed and cancelled, etc. Maybe he heard something but couldn't say it. And where was the postponement then? Well, there was none. And let's forget, this was leaked. This story was leaked to the Daily Mail. They're the ones who broke this news. So had that news not have taken place, this fight would have went ahead. So that kind of defended him and saying, well, he could have still put it on. Who would have sanctioned it? The British Boxing Board of Control pulled their sanction. He would have had to get some organization, a Mickey Mouse organization from God knows where, to put this fight on in short time. It was a case of you have to, there's no other option but to call this fight off. So, realistically, like, to say, to give someone credit for pulling the fight off, which it looked like that was going to happen anyway, but the fact of the matter was, if this hadn't have been broken or leaked to the Daily Mail, this fight would have went on. And, you know, Bellew, some people I've seen on Twitter were saying, look, people are being a little bit harsh on Bellew. And at the end of the day, right, my kind of way of looking at it is this, right? If you're going to have that passion, that passion of... Bandy's drug cheats, Ortiz, Pavekin, Miller, to get rid they'll never darken the sports door again. They shouldn't. If you're gonna have that passion, when it's a fighter you know, or a fighter who's promoted by Eddie Hearn, Matroom, where's that passion? Oh Billy Joe is clearly not a cheater. Oh Dylan White's not a cheater. Oh no, 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 no. That could never happen. Where's the passion? And look, I'm not saying that, you know. Obviously, big farmer Miller, as we all know. But, like, when you have Luis Ortiz, and I'm not giving him a pass. Don't think I am. But when he's using similar excuses. Oh, I was on medication for high blood pressure. 
oh no 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 you're a drug cheat you're a drug cheat but when Billy Joe Saunders says oh it was on nasal spray oh clearly on nasal spray it's like where's the discrepancy and, and at the time Billy Joe wasn't even man it wasn't even promoted by Matchroom actually funny enough but I think he was close to Bellew that was when he's back with fish eyes when Bellew is so biased in favour of man that that's known people if you don't know he is one of the most biased he, he Johnny Nelson is kind of funny you know I don't think Johnny Nelson means to be funny but he's biased but in a funny kind of way I don't think he means to be but it's kind of funny but with Bellew it's just not with Bellew it's just annoying and with Bellew some of the things he says over the years are so bizarre like a good example would be when AJ knocked out Klitschko he came out straight after that fight and said no one's ever done that to Klitschko he's like what? Corey Sanders? Lamont Brewster? I mean Corey Sanders didn't Barely got touched against Klitschko. Look at AJ. So, and that the AJ obsession with Bellew I find strange as well. I mean, Anthony Joshua, if Bellew was in Joshua's inner circle and he was always around them, I'd probably understand it a bit more, but he's not. That's the weird part. He's just so pro AJ and AJ is just kind of almost keeping him at arm's length the whole time. And it's just weird. I just find that very strange. But people are saying people are going a bit harsh on Bellew and... You know, I think if you're going to go down the road of essentially cheerleading for Matrim, given all Matrim, if a Matrim fighter loses, there's like when Kid Galahad lost to Kiko Martinez, Belly was there as a pundit. The first thing he said was, it's the weight. It's only the weight, it's nothing else. It's nothing to do with the fact that Kiko Martinez was able to notice little sudden movements that uh, Kid Galahad was doing, mistakes in his stance, etc. It was just the weight. And if he hadn't been weight drained, he would have walked through that left hook, no problem at all. When you're going to be like that, and that's going to be the height of your addition to a punditry team, when something like this happens, people are not going to go easy on you. They're going to give it to you tenfold. Because I think a lot of people are just fed up with listening to him. At the end of the day, being biased. I mean, look at the Richards versus Boazzi card. Look at the way he was scoring that fight. Look at the way he always is on the zone. It's just, it's not nice. You know, it's not nice having to pay and listen to that. And Bellew, Bellew was the sort of guy where, like, would he be on the zone? Would he get these gigs if he wasn't such a brown nose? No. I mean, seriously, like, there was so much better talent, better pundits. And, like, you could have a pundit who's not particularly good, like David Hay. But they're ban- they have banter. They've got a bit of charisma and you don't mind it. And they can kind of go back and forth with like Carl Frampton or someone. When you have a team where even if someone's not a particularly good pundit, they can still have banter. You know, you, but Ben just none of that. It's just none of that with him. It's just marketing. I was like a marketing exec on screen. So that's my kind of rant though. I just felt like, why not make a video on it? Because I, I just was, biz- I was baffled when I saw that he was trying to find a way to give Eddie Hearn a pass. I was like, you can't. And, and uh, nor should he. We shouldn't be giving Eddie Hearn a pass. Also, I don't want to add this in. Kelly Sowerland shouldn't be getting off lightly either. I mean, people are going to say, oh, Eddie Hearn, this, Eddie Hearn, that. Kelly Sowerland was happy to have this fight go ahead. Now, bear in mind, Kelly Sowerland, his fighter was Eubank. His fighter is the one who's done nothing wrong, who's had a rehydration clause put in, who's had a catch weight. And now he's had the opponent fail a drugs test. And Kelly Sauerland is still like, oh, no, 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 we'll, we'll get this fight made. So he has to shoulder some blame too. It's not all on Eddie Hearn. No, it's not all on Eddie Hearn. Kelly Sauerland, he's got questions to answer as well. He really does. So that's my rant for the day over with. My rant for the day. On a, on a brighter note, on a brighter note, um, many of you will know the last few weeks have been a bit rough for me outside of here. And today I just got some really... Good news. I always say when I do review of the week, I hope someone gets good news this week. And I got good news this week. So I got one of the... It's a lovely feeling, isn't it? When you get to hand your notice into a job you hate. And that's what I got to do today. I got to do that today. Now, it's not the new job I'm going to. It's not anything to do with boxing or journalism yet. Maybe someday. But it's an improvement. And at the end of the day... My kind of way of looking at life has always been, if you're not happy in a situation, change it. 
you're not too young, you're not too old, change it. If something's not, if you're not happy in a situation or you want to move something or change something, just change it, you know? I always use the, the analogy, imagine drinking from a cup that's really, really cracked and chipped. And every time you drink from it, it cuts you. It gives you a little cut on the cheek or on the lip or something. And the more you keep drinking from it, the more it keeps cutting you and leaving you with scars. Whereas someone says, oh, by the way, see that cup you're drinking of it? It's pretty pretty bad. It's seen better days. Here, here's a new one. Ah, no, 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 I'll keep drinking out of this one. But it's cutting you. I know when it hurts, but I may as well just keep drinking out. It's all I know. No, I've never been like that. I've been like, throw that cup again a wall. Get a brand new one in. If you don't like the new one, just throw that one away, even if it's perfect, and make it better. That's the way I've always been. So... It's good news, and yeah, a good new a, a ranting video ending on a good note, or so we'll say. Well, yeah, it's a good. It is good. It is good. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you could. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, people. For now, I will talk to you. You know, I planned on doing a watch along tomorrow. Ain't no watch along happening now, but. I don't know if I'll get a video out tomorrow, but for sure we will do a Sunday sesh. We'll do a Sunday evening session this Sunday, and we will dissect it. We will dissect the week's events, and it will lead us into the next week where we will have a big review of the week. Because I didn't do midweek report because the recordings kept crashing. I mean, literally, like I recorded 20 minutes and it, the recording just crashed. And it wasn't me not pressing start. I made sure, look at start, it just did not do anything. So. That was annoying because it was like 20 minutes I was recording for and to talk for nothing. It was just like, really? So we'll do a big one on Sunday. For now, I'll leave you with that. I'll talk to these people. Peace.